I'm back. Regen Rovers is back. Welcome to episode 101 of the series. I'm feeling refreshed for the start of season 12 of Regen Rovers because I went on holiday for a week. It's always good to get away, isn't it? And uh, certainly helped me just recharge my batteries. We went away, myself and my wife, we went to Iceland, a place I've wanted to go to for many years. Such a beautiful country. We stayed in Reykjavik, but we did see quite a bit of sort of the southwest of Iceland, I suppose. I would highly recommend it. Wonderful place to go to. Anyway, today's episode, we will be playing the first match of our second championship season. We're going to be taking on Stoke City at Plumbing Park. Unfortunately, Plumbing Park at the moment has got a bit of a reduced capacity because the stadium is being expanded, which is glorious news. Uh, we're also having improved training facilities, youth facilities. Uh, the stadium will be finished in December, as you can see there. Financially, we're in a, a brilliant position, and that's why we are able to improve these things. Loads of money for competing in the championship. Uh, the wage budget has gone up. We've had a bit of a transfer budget, although I've not really spent much money. I'm trying to save as much as possible. And this year is all about loans. It's all about loan transfers. Uh, I've I've not really made any loan transfers during this year. Well, I have made loan transfers, but none of them have been successful. So I feel like it's fair enough for me to, to go, it, go in in one season and just loan a ton of players and try and get as far up the championship as possible. Previously, I went for these sorts of players, but they didn't want to come to me because of the club reputation. But the club reputation has improved. It's still very low. It's only two stars, which is dreadful for the championship. That's like a League 2 quality team. But it is better, and we have been able to attract a few players to the club, which is fantastic news. Look at that, by the way. Look at the progression we have made in the 11 seasons. Now, I suppose a lot of you are probably wondering about David Okoro. I did a bit of a referendum on David Okoro. I need to check the, the recent results, actually. This is what it is right now. 67% of you have said that David Okoro shouldn't be our number one this season. There's still a lot of loyalty towards him, but it's quite a conclusive result that. If it was 52-48, then you know, there'd be a bit of discrepancy there, but it's 67-33. So David Okoro, according to you guys, should no longer be our number one goalkeeper. However, he is still our club captain. And we have to remember that, some of you may not have watched the, the season review, you have to remember that Okoro, although yes, he let in a lot of goals last season, Maybe the odd mistake here and there. He actually made the most saves in the championship last season, more than any other goalkeeper. I don't know if that's more, uh, that's probably a slightly worrying statistic because it means our defence wasn't particularly good. But a lot of you were saying that maybe all the long shots are flying in because Okoro can't reach them, etc. He's not the tallest goalkeeper in the world, I don't think. Yeah, 180 centimetres, that's about my height, 5'11". So he's not the tallest goalkeeper, so there could be something in, the, in that theory that long shots are flying in because he can't reach them. That's possible. So, I'm rambling here a bit at the start of this episode, trying to get back into things, back into the Regen Rovers flow. Uh, Glenn Martin is going to be the number one to start with this season. I was unable to find a better goalkeeper to come in that wanted to come to us. So Glenn Martin will be the number one. According to my assistant, according to his attributes, he is better than David Okori. He has improved since joining the club. If we have a look at this here, you can see things have gone up slightly. You know, area reach has gone up from eight to, to nine, for example. So a few things have managed to go up. In fact, that's just the last month. No, maybe that is the last six months. Yeah, last six months. So we're gonna put the trust in Glenn Martin at the start of this season. A lot of positions have been improved. Like I said, a lot of loan transfers. We can only use five loan players in a match day squad in the championship and we've signed six. That's a bit of a problem because all six of them really are first team players for starters. Let's have a look at those transfers in more detail then. But first of all, players that have left the club. Now I'm going to put some screenshots up of players that have left the club. Sean Walker, absolute legend. He is gone. 300 appearances with the club. He was so important at the start of this series, but he he's wanted to, he, he wants to leave. He's, he's wanted to leave for a while. I don't know why he hasn't left, because he's not got a contract, but he's finally gone. And yeah, he's not found a club. Other players to leave. Rob Halliday, 107 appearances for the club. He came through the Youth Academy, so he's been a fairly significant player. Dickie Strutton's gone. Decided to let him go. 
Curry, he's gone as well, decided not to renew his contract. Gareth Hancock as well, hasn't really played particularly well the last couple of seasons, so I've let him go. Uh, Hunt has gone on a free, which you might be shocked by, but he didn't want to sign a new contract. I did offer one, but he didn't want to sign. But players to go for actual fees, Austin Tilly has gone for £75,000 to Portsmouth. Didn't really impress me. Didn't fit into our system. He was an inverted winger. I kind of signed him by accident, but I've made a, a decent profit there. seventy five grand. John Patton Armour may be a little bit surprised by this because he's only 20. Came to us when he was 18. Lots of potential. Never really fulfilled that potential with us, I don't think. His average rating is not the best. Scored a few goals, got a few assists. But he's gone to Aberdeen for £300,000. But the sell-on percentage after that, if they sell him on, 50% for us. I can't remember if it's profit or or just just right, you know, 50% of the whole fee. I'm not 100% sure about that, about that. But if he does go for big money in the future, we can benefit from that. So I think that's a good transfer from our point of view. Toby Brazil was at Region Rovers for four seasons. But I've decided to let him go. Look at that profit. Excellent profit. He's not good enough for the championship. He's gone to League One Bristol City for £150,000. We've signed, we've signed better players than him. I know they're mainly on loan, but we have improved upon a lot of the positions. So the first player to come in actually replaced Austin Tilly and possibly was going to replace Stuart Cochran. Now, you know Stuart Cochran. We signed him last season, right winger. Had a, a decent year. He's, he's young. He's only 19. Now, Cardiff City came in with a bid, including bonuses and clauses, etc., of uh, I think it was £2.3 million, which would have been a hell of a lot of money for us. And I accepted it for that simple reason. So much money. But he actually rejected the Cardiff City contract. Now, I think Cardiff are in the Premier League. No, they're not. Where are <laughs> where are Cardiff? They're in the Championship. They must have were they relegated last year? Yeah, they were relegated last year, and they're, they're trying to, to to poach Cochrane from me, and I, I accepted it. But he rejected it, so he's loyal to Region Rovers. He didn't like their contract offer. Maybe he thinks he'll get more first team football here. So I thought Rutherford was also going to replace Cochrane, but actually he's not. He's he's coming as we've got two decent right wingers. We've got Cochrane and Christian Rutherford played in League 2 previously, but played very well. He actually got one of the highest average ratings in League 2 last season, so that's why I've picked him up, and I think he will be first choice. Him and Cochrane will be fighting for that right wing play, place. He, in his first uh, game for the club, was a friendly, picked up a hat-trick of assists. Um, didn't get any more assists during pre-season, but he did very well in that first game. So he's the first player to come in. Steve Taylor was next in, a 19-year-old central midfielder from Manchester United. He was on loan at Cheltenham last year in League 2. Didn't play amazingly well, but he is an improvement on Toby Brazil. You, you'll notice the attributes. He's much better. 14 passing, 16 vision, 14 technique, but well-rounded as well. 16 first touch. And looks really good. And I think he'll play alongside Howard Flanagan in the middle. Next up, Chris Potter on loan from Southampton. By the way, some of these players were paying, you know, 50% of the wages. Others, there's no wages. It's kind of a mixture. But Chris Potter in at left back. Now, it's a position I didn't necessarily need to improve because Blackman is actually decent. I think he, he had a good end to last season. But I think Chris Potter is an improvement on him. Samuel Orsini has dropped into the under-23s. He's on a non-contract, a rolling contract now that his contract has ended. He's decided to stay at the club for the time being. You'll notice Ray Riggs still here. Morgan Forks is still here. And there's a, there's a couple young players that have a bit of potential, which I'll introduce you to in a bit. But yeah, Chris Potter, like the look of him at left back. Jimmy Hoare at right back. On loan from Portsmouth, strangely, uh, because they're in League One. I don't know why um, they've loaned him out because I'm pretty sure he'd be their best player, especially if we, we've sold Austin Tilly to Portsmouth. So it kind of shows that quality difference there. I think we're a better team. But they've decided to loan Jimmy Hoare to us. He's definitely a championship quality player, or bottom half championship quality player for us anyway. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be solid. A bit of an upgrade on Passmore, who will be back up this season now that Hancock has gone. Next up was actually a permanent transfer, Gregor Bilbo who has come from Stoke City, who we're going to be playing today. Uh, he had loads of loans, as you can see there, uh, but he's finally found a home at Region Rovers. Look at that pass, passing 17, vision 16. Pacey as well, he's a good player. He might play ahead of Steve Taylor. We'll see how Steve Taylor performs, I suppose. But, I mean, maybe Steve Taylor could be that, because we've got six loan transfers, maybe he'd be the one that steps aside. Or we might just rotate a little bit. Next up, a lone player, Vedran Tusakovic, 
Don't know if I pronounced that right, but we're going with that for the time being. He's a Croatian youth international, 21 under 21 caps, seven goals for Croatia. And he's come in from Watford. He signed him on a free just last season and loaned him to Dynamo Zagreb. Uh, I like him. And he's had a good pre-season. He's scored two goals, got an assist. He's played in the European Under-21 Championships as well in the summer. I like the look of him. He's very well-rounded and he's, he's good in that left midfield role. I'm quite excited about this chat. Vitor, Brazilian centre-back, on loan from Leeds United. They signed him for 235k a couple seasons ago. Uh, haven't loaned him out. He did actually play... Premier League football in his first season and then a couple games in the championship last year and they got promoted of course but I, I think he's, he's really good he's easily the best centre-back we've ever had it's a shame it's only going to be for one season probably and lastly he's just come in just uh, he's played one pre-season game and an under 23 game one Manuel Luna a Spanish striker look at those physicals he's pacey he's fit he's got good composure flair anticipation Finishing and dribbling is decent. He's an improvement on Ryan Curtis, who had a pretty poor end to last season. Him and Mark Ball up front alongside each other could cause problems, will cause problems to championship defences. Mark Ball, by the way, is the favourite to be top goal scorer this season. He's favourite to, to reclaim that prize from last year. So those are the transfers. This is the squad. You can see the players we've still got. Lucas Long is still here. Adam Pearce, centre-back, still here. Perry Miles, legend, finished second in the Twitter Player of the Season award last season. Mark Ball picked it up for the fourth time in a row, by the way. But yeah, Perry Miles is still here. You can see the quality difference between him and the likes of Steve Taylor or, or Howard Flanagan, of course, who is actually our best central midfielder. Had a pretty poor start to his Region Rovers career last season, but certainly improved throughout the year. But Perry Miles, he scored two bangers in episode 100. What a legend. And that kind of brings me on to the young players that have come through. We've had two that have gone straight into the under-23s. So the first impressive looking at youth intake player from last season is Serenity. Not his real name. It's a, it's a Patreon player. So thank you to everyone that continues to support me through Patreon. You guys are legends. Now he's an attacking midfielder. Doesn't really fit into our system. Apparently he's a shadow striker. So I'm training him up as a central midfielder. He can sort of play there already. Um, but I like the look of it. He's got potential, that is for sure. He's definitely got the most potential of any player we've ever produced. He's already pretty close to Perry Miles' current ability. And the next one that came through last season, Thomas van den Buch, another Patreon player. Sorry if I've murdered that pronunciation, Thomas. Um, but yeah, he's a striker. 10 on finishing, decent heading, physicals are okay could improve to being a, a decent player one day. He's already the same ability as a goo, for example. Uh, another youth player a couple years ago, Dylan Davies. He's been moved into the under-23s. Don't think... I mean, there is potential there for this, this Welsh attacking midfielder. But once again, doesn't really fit into the system we play. Uh, Under-18s, there's not really anyone here apart from George Igwe. 16-year-old striker. There's some okay physicals, everything else is a bit iffy, but he's got a little bit of potential, apparently. Oh, and for the first time ever, we're actually competing in a youth division. We've been included in the English Under-18 Division 3 Southwest. Bit of a mouthful, that. Where are we predicted to finish, then? I hear you ask, or maybe you don't ask, but I show it every year, and here we go. Season preview. Just turn my face off. We're expected to finish bottom again. 1,000 to 1 to win the league. That's actually worse than last year, I think. Southampton, recently relegated Southampton, predicted to finish top. We've got Middlesbrough and Cardiff, also relegated, expected to finish in, in and around the playoffs. Uh, Millwall, Ipswich and Exeter City, the, the three teams to get promoted, all expected to finish towards the bottom of the table. We're going to have to pick up points against them. Hopefully we'll be a bit more comfortable this year because we do have a stronger team, I think. I think it is a stronger team overall. In fact, let's compare ourselves against the rest of the league. Luna is our best striker, as you can see there, according to my coaches. Our average age still two years below the championship average age, 23. We've signed quite a few young lone players this year, I suppose. Stuart Cochran's the youngest player on the team. David Aquaro, over 27 now. I think Morgan Fawkes is 28, actually. He is. He's the oldest player in the squad. He's still here. Still clinging on. 
Average wage, look at that, it's well below the average wage of the championship. I suppose our highest earners will actually be the players on loan. I think there's a couple that are earning about 8k a week, even from us. That's half of their wage from their, their parent club. I'll just turn my face off so you can see this properly. Uh, but I, yeah, I think overall things have improved a little bit. Work rate's the, the worst in the league, which is slightly worrying. Goalkeeper-wise, of course, this is Glenn Martin and David Okoro combined. So aerial reach is the lowest one-on-ones and throw in but above average for reflexes 12th best in the championship defensively that's much better than last year i think there's nothing that is the worst uh, we've got above average marking midfield wise worst long shots we've never been particularly good with the long shot attribute but we have scored quite a few long shots over the years uh, fifth best stamina worst decisions attacking wise we've got the worst long shots and heading but finishing wise, third best in the championship. We've always been known for good finishing, haven't we? Physically, terrible agility. Everything else is below average. I think that's probably the, our young players coming into effect here. They haven't developed physically compared to the average player in the championship, I suppose. Mentally, aggression. <laughs> We've always had good aggression. Decent leadership, actually. And technically, this is much better. I feel like we're finished mid-table this year. I'm really hopeful we can manage that. So pre-season, we started off with a big game against Arsenal at Plumbing Park. Capacity crowd has been reduced because of the, the stadium expansion. Uh, brought in a bit of money. It was a TV game as well, so even more money. We did lose 1-0. We, uh, we drew against Dunstable and Ipswich. Now, at this point, I was playing a 4-5-1 tactic with Alan Stevenson, our defensive midfielder, playing here. I've taken out the, the left striker position and moved it here uh, thinking that might be the way to go this season just to be a bit more solid but pretty poor results against Dunstable an okay draw against Ipswich a fellow championship team just promoted but since going to the attacking tactic we've played very weak teams so I don't know whether it really is a true reflection um, but it's a lot more fun we're scoring more goals we'll probably concede more goals in the championship but as we saw at the end of last season it worked really well didn't it in front of goal anyway by the way Vitor scored three goals from center back and I, I have to show you the best one of the lot it was an absolute oh wait is it this one I think it's this one it was an absolute beauty from what I can remember Flanagan crossed it in but <laughs> what the volley it was inside the box. I remember it being about 30 yards out, but it was actually inside the box. But it's still a great strike. So before we get on with today's episode, please let me know which of our new signings you think will have the biggest impact this season. Who's your favourite looking? Who's going to do the business for Regen Rovers? So let's get on with the first match of the season. Stoke City have made their way down to Plumbing Park in Winchester. So one of our loan signings had to miss out today because we can only have a maximum of five players our new striker Luna will miss out. He's only just joined the club. He's still building up his, his match sharpness as well. So he'll probably play an under 23 game to build that up. But there's lots of new players making their competitive debut for the club. Jimmy Hoare, Vitor, Chris Potter, Steve Taylor, Tsakovic, Rutherford, our other new signing, making his debut as well. And Glenn Martin in goal. What can he do? Did he even play a league? He played one league game last season. This is only a second league game for the club. He played plenty of cup competitions. Well, the, the Hampshire Senior Cup last year. But he's, he's stepping up. Uh, do we play him in his preferred goalkeeper role rather than a sweeper-keeper? We've been we've played a sweep, sweeper-keeper and defend ever since the start of this series, I think. But maybe it's time to switch to a normal goalkeeper just to suit Glenn Martin. They've beaten us twice. They beat us twice last season. They are the favourites. One of the favourites to, to finish towards the top of the table, I think. I might be completely wrong about that. Stoke City lining up with a 4-1-2-2-1 with wingers. 4-3-3, essentially. Mekic up front. Complete forward. Looks decent. Their wingers. Luke Clark on the right. And Bradley Winter on the left. There's some quality there. Jorg Luis, a Brazilian. Some good-looking players. McEachran. In fact, they've only got three real-life players. Mark Ball. And Ryan Curtis leading the line. Mark Ball is captain today. He's vice captain at the club now. So David Okoro, when he doesn't play, it'll be Mark Ball leading the line. But look at all these players making their debut. It's a big day for the club. Lots of changes. Will it work? We're looking to avenge what happened last time. We're going with the 4-4-2 that worked reasonably well at the end of last season. We've got that defensive 4-5-1 with uh, Alan Stevenson to come on if need be. It's pretty solid, I think. Oh, I'm excited. 
As I said, I'm feeling refreshed after my holiday and I'm looking forward to the 12th season of Regen Rovers. How are we going to get on, guys? As well as letting me know about your favourite player from the new signings, let me know where you think we're going to finish. Predictions, please. But here comes Stoke early on. That's only two minutes into the game. They're looking dangerous. Winter has the shot. It's a long shot that flies past Glenn Martin. Maybe it's not Okoro's fault, guys. It's just overpowered long shots in this game. That's what it is. Not the best start. And Stoke coming forward again. McEachran crossing it to the back post. Vitor heads away as far as Rutherford, who clears it up the pitch looking for Ryan Curtis. Here he is. It's a great ball to Mark Ball. Here is Mark Ball. And he's already opened his account for this season. Wow. Great finish from Mark Ball. Lovely assist from Ryan Curtis. Those two up front. This is their fourth, well, the start of the fourth season together. This is Mark Ball's fifth season with the club. Ryan Curtis is fourth season with the club. Both of them are in the record books. Mark Ball is our all-time top goal scorer now at the club, ahead of Agu, and he's added another one to his tally. What a legend this guy is. He's the best player of the series, easily. David Okora is my favourite, but Mark Ball is the best. What a player. And we've actually been reasonably good in this game. Here's Ryan... Oh, is this a highlight? I don't think it is. Or maybe it is. Here's Mark Ball again. Mark Ball! Good save by the keeper this time. We've won a corner which uh, Tasakovic, a Croatian, will take. It's Dehor. That's the end of that highlight. Definitely take a draw against Stoke. We've won a corner though. Rutherford into to, to Potter. To the edge of the box for Mark Ball. What's he going to do? He's found, put it out wide to Howard Flanagan. Crosses in. Mark Ball. Mark Ball off the post. So unlucky. Tasakovic blocked. Here's Potter. Come on. It's crossed in. It's knocked away. We've had one clear-cut chance of four half chances in this game we've been the better team they've scored from a long shot remember here's potter our new left back throwing it into the box for curtis heading it back to potter crossed in and it's an easy save for the keeper that one just trying to remember all the new player names you have to there's a bit of takes a bit of getting used to doesn't it seeing all these especially so many in one go here's rutherford our new right winger I'll try and remind you of all the names and, and where they've come from and what's happened. But Curtis has taken the lead. Or oh, we've taken the lead, thanks to Ryan Curtis, with a lovely finish. Our two strikers with the goals. Maybe we don't need Luna up front. Perhaps he's going to be a backup option. Rutherford drove at the defence. And it was, it was very fortunate, to be fair. But Curtis hit it first time. Cracking finish. This is very encouraging. I'm very pleased with that. And all the players are delighted as well. Let's go. Second half. I must say I really like the look of Vitor. Our centre-back on loan from Leeds. He could have the biggest impact. Solidifying that defence. Alongside Elliot Dix. Shame to see Curry go. But I didn't think he was going to really develop into being the player we, we need at the back. Still got Adam Pearce. Still got Lucas Long. There's options. Steve Taylor's going to come off for Gregor Bilbo. Chris Potter's looking nervous. 6.4 from here. I think we're going to throw on Blackman. I mean, that's a position maybe Blackman will be a starter and Chris Potter will miss out. You know, no one's no one's got that, that position cemented down apart from the likes of Mark Ball. He's probably the only player in the team that has his position cemented. Eight minutes to go. It's been a boring second half. Here comes Stoke, looking to, to bring some life to this second half and get back into this game. It's a delightful ball out wide to Hood, who crosses it to the back post. Blackman does very well to head that away, but here comes Stoke again. Lothar, back to Murhead. Oh, not another long-range shot. It is as well, and look at that, Glenn Martin. He got hands to it, and he couldn't keep it out. Two long-range shots. I thought we'd solved this issue at the end of last season, but... Ah... <sighs> You know, football fans are fickle. You might easily... I bet there'd be people in the comment section saying, look at, look at Glenn Martin. You know, what, what has he done? He's tried to punch the ball. And we don't deserve to draw this game. We deserve to win. But at the moment, it looks like we're going to have to settle for a point because of two long-range shots. We're going to push these guys up. I, I feel like we, we just... We deserve to win this. We really do. So I'm going to push forwards. We're going to go attack and we're going to risk it here. Goal kick. Well, free kick, sorry. To Stoke. Knocked up the pitch. We can't win it. And maybe going with the attacking wingers is a little bit suicidal. But I'm just a little bit frustrated at the fact that three long-range shots have flown past Glenn Martin today. Oh, he couldn't do anything about that one. But th this is just ridiculous. Long-range shots. They, they just... They all fly in. They all fly. We don't deserve to lose this. 
Oh my, what? I mean, that is a fabulous goal, but I just, it's so frustrating. We've been easily the better team. We've had so many chances. We deserve, we deserve three points and we're going to get zero. It's really annoying. But going forwards, it's very encouraging as a fourth one goes. I mean, that's the edge of the box as well. Encouraging going forwards. It's, and defensively, you can't really, I, I wouldn't say we were terrible defensively. And I wouldn't say maybe we could have done anything better defensively. You could maybe closing down, but four shots from the edge of, or outside the box have gone in today for Stoke. That's really annoying us. Tosakovic almost gets a third for us. It's just one of those days. On another day, all of them would have flown wide or over. But what are the chances of four shots like that going in in one game? Seriously? We've been unlucky. I don't know whether it's Glenn Martin's fault. Perhaps, I think for the second one, it was. The, the last two, it wasn't his fault. But I don't know. Defensively as well from, I mean, Elliot Dix had the worst game out of the centre-backs, but it was mainly because we conceded two goals at the end there. Well, three, oh, look at that. Two, one up. Seven minutes to go. Perhaps I should have gone defensive before this goal went in. But it was just a comfortable game up to that point. I thought, let's just leave it. There's no need to make changes. But in hindsight, maybe I should have gone defensive. Maybe I should have brought Alan Stevenson on in the middle rather than Gregor Bilbo. Uh, also, when it did go to 2-2 and I was saying, oh, we deserve to win this, let's go attacking. Maybe I should have left it on balance and just settled for a draw. I don't know. There's things you can learn from every game. But we have started the season with a defeat. I'm going to say that just to keep them happy, keep the morale up. Encouraging signs going forward though. Mark Ball, Ryan Curtis have already opened their accounts. Next few games then. We've got Blackburn, Norwich, Derby predicted to finish bottom. In fact, Norwich is in the League Cup. And David Okoro will make his 500th appearance in that game. And I feel like I have to show you that. That is a significant milestone for him. He will play in that game. We're also going to take on Derby. So I'm only going to play Blackburn between. But I, I have to show his 500th competitive appearance for the club. It's only right, isn't it? But thank you for watching episode 101 of Region Rovers. It ends in disappointment in the end. Really unfortunate with those stupid long shots, but there we go. Until next time, enjoy FM19. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.